Today we're looking at a brand new anamorphic lens from Small Rig. Yep, Small Rig now makes lenses for your smartphone. All right, so let's see what's in this kit. It comes with this nice case. Then inside you have the actual lens and the lens comes with what I think is a pretty cool cover. It's made out of rubber, but it's like a lens cap that actually connects to the back as well. So that's nice. So you got the lens cap with the lens, then you get a foam clamp and the foam clamp makes this universal. That way you can mount it on any device, Android or iPhone, and using any case or no case, depending on how you rig this. And then it comes with a filter mount, which we'll talk more about later. And also a small carry bag, which I guess you could use instead of this if you're going out on location. And then a lens cleaning cloth. So that's what comes in the kit. So what makes this lens different and pretty unique in my opinion and worth a look if you're in the market for an anamorphic is this has a magnetic connection. And so this part connects to your case or your cage and then the anamorphic just pops on via magnet. This is the small rig 13 Pro Max cage. I really like this cage and I really like that Small Rig has taken an interest in smartphone video, smartphone cinematography. So here is the lens and this is a bayonet mount. So it's a moment mount. They call it an M mount. So it'll work with this particular cage. It'll work with a beast cage if you have the M mount on that. And of course it'll work with a moment case among others. And so all you do just like with any cage is you twist it on, the back is secure. And so the nice thing is the lens just connects magnetically and you're ready to shoot. But I like how you can easily attach that and then also easily take it off. The build quality of this lens is good. It feels like a quality product. It's made out of aluminum. And then the magnetic back is the same way. It feels strong. And especially using it with this particular small rig cage, the connection is great. Now I will say while magnetic systems themselves are kind of cool and convenient, for heavy duty filmmaking, if you're putting a lot of filters and stuff on a system, I don't love them in that respect. However, for again, quick change and easy use for social media and such, I really do like it. Now, this lens is a 1.55 times stretch. So that means it's a 2.76 to one widescreen look. Most anamorphic lenses for phones are 1.33. And so this gives you a really wide field of view, which really isn't ideal for social media, to be honest. It is really designed for narrative. Movies in particular, or music videos, anything where you're trying to get a more cinematic, in quote, look. The other thing about an anamorphic lens is it will produce lens flares. And this one's no different. So at the beginning, I mentioned this filter mount. And when I first got it, I was like, wow, cool. They include a filter mount that works natively with the lens, and it does. It just slides over the end, like so. So now you have a filter mount on the lens, and it's a 52 millimeter. So what I did was naturally, I grabbed a 
52 to 58 millimeter step up rain because I don't really have any 52 millimeter filters. I primarily buy larger ones. 58 is the smallest I typically buy. And so I took it and put it on. And I spun and spun and spun. And I'm like, I've got a faulty filter mount. There's no threads. So I went on Amazon, I went on Small Rig's website and searched and searched. And I should add that no instructions come with this lens. It turns out this is not a threaded filter mount. It's magnetic. Okay, great. I assume that they sell magnetic filters. They don't sell them. Third party vendors sell some filters. I did eventually find a thread that recommended a brand from Amazon. I looked at them and they're pretty expensive. And so I have not bought one yet at the time of this review. I really hope in the future they make a threaded version of this. My assumption is the reason they didn't is because of the weight issues. Since this is magnetic, they probably don't want you putting a real heavy filter on the outside of this. That's my guess, because this does just slip over the end. Reminds me of the Moment filter mount. And so with my Moment one, you might've seen a video that I did where I actually mounted their filter mount and I used gaff tape. And that's exactly what I would do with this one too if I was putting a bigger filter on it. But for now, you can only use magnetic and there's a limited supply. And so that is a bummer. So do I recommend it? Yes and no. The positives first. I like that it's really easy to use and the magnetic feature is pretty cool. I haven't worked with a lens like that before. The image quality is good, particularly in the middle, it's nice and sharp, but not too sharp. The flares look pretty good, a little bit digital, but that's not uncommon with these kind of lenses. It's also a moment mount, which I really like. So that makes it where you can use it on a variety of cases and cages really easily. And then the price is right. At the time of this video, it's $99. That's really right in the middle, and so it's a pretty good price point. Now the negatives. The edges do get a little bit soft, but more so they're susceptible to fringing, chromatic aberration, and even some ghosting. This isn't out of the ordinary though, because the B-Script 1.55 times anamorphic does the same thing. These shots are from an 11 Pro Max. You can see the edges and the corners look similar. One difference though is the small rig has more distortion, especially shooting stuff up close as compared to the B-Script 1.55. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the way you look at it. And then of course you can, in post-production, remove some distortion. In my testing, I did find the lens had a little bit of a warm tint to it, nothing too dramatic, and you can easily correct that in color correction. And one other big one, and again, this isn't uncommon, especially using the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and that's what I shot this test footage with, it doesn't work well on the telephoto. However, interestingly, it does work fine if you're within maybe six feet or so of the camera. Anything beyond that, it's out of focus. I did a test with the Moondog Labs bayonet mount anamorphic and it did the same thing. In this example, you can see that I'm focused on the bushes, but then when I rack to the trees in the distance, they don't come into focus. This is a 13 Pro Max issue, at least that's my understanding. And it happens on a lot of different lenses. So again, it's not unique to this one, but I had hoped that it would work. And the very last thing is the filter mount. The filter mount, I'm assuming will work great if you have the magnetic filters. I don't think most people have those. And if you do, they're part of a kit that won't work with this. These are very specific. And of course, shooting with an ND with video in particular is super important to get proper motion blur. But in the end, you're getting a 276 to one widescreen aspect ratio, which is super cool on a phone. It's a great way to get introduced to anamorphic without breaking the bank. If you are interested in this lens, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.